So hello everybody, it is Friday, so it's time for another DAX Fridays, a new DAX function every Friday. Okay, with that said, we are going to continue with the statistical series and I am going to talk about confidence intervals. Yes, so this is what we're going to do. First, I'm going to explain what confidence interval is. Number two, I'm going to explain the difference between confidence T versus confidence norm. There are two DAX functions. And number three, we're going to do an example. So we actually will going to calculate the confidence interval for real. So you see how they are calculated. How about we get started? Who knew that statistics were so much fun and so useful? Okay, so we need a case, right? Otherwise, it's very difficult to explain. So this is a scenario. Think like this. You want to put a commercial on my YouTube channel, okay? And... Um, you would like to know who the viewers are. So you don't have that information. YouTube does not provide that information for you, but you can still find out, kind of. So here's the thing. My YouTube channel, it is the population and it is around 24,000 subscribers. Now, what you could do is to go to all those 24,000 subscribers and ask them, how old are you? Obviously, not feasible, right? It's absolutely impossible to do that. So what you would do is you go and sample, get, get some, you know, ask a few of them or just, you know, grab the profile from some of them. This is sample one. And you get, calculate the average. So this is average, I don't know, 35, for example. Okay, if you would do that a few times, we go there again and we pick another sample of people and then sample two, and we find out that the average is, I don't know, 42. And then we do it again, sample three, and we have an average of 28, for example. So you'll see that every time you go there and poke into the audience, you'll get a different value. But does it mean that you cannot calculate the mean? Well, you can, you can estimate it. So the difference between these is what is called the sample error. Okay, so it is variations that you will get depending on who you're asking on the population. Nothing weird. That's why the way to calculate confidence interval goes like this. So you go and you pick a sample and you calculate the average of that sample. Say that is, I don't know, 38. And then you calculate a confidence interval. So this is 38 and then this is plus something and minus something. So that confidence interval would determine how sure you are that the values within that range is the actual, the true, what is, what is it? It is the true average for the population, for my entire YouTube channel. Okay, so this interval somewhere in there is the truth is the, this parameter, we call it y. Somewhere in here it is 95% of the time. So you're 95% confidence that the value that we have in this interval is the true age of my YouTube channel. Cool, right? Okay, so what affects the size of the interval? Okay, so there are a few factors that will affect the confidence interval. So let's go through them. The first factor is actually how sure you want to be. So what confidence interval you want to achieve. More often than not, you usually pick 95% to be pretty sure that you are correct. Okay, so you will be wrong 5% of the time. The next factor that has an effect on your confidence interval is variation. Variation. And what is variation? Okay, think like this. We go here into this sample and instead of getting 35 like we got here, we got 41. 
In that example, we got 42. And in that example, we got 46. So the values on those samples are very, very, very close to each other, or the values within this pool of data is very, very close to each other. So the spread is very little. Do you remember spread? I have a video on spread. It's the standard deviation. Please go and check it because I explain what spread means. But it's basically how how much different values you have within your sample. So how tall your data is. You have to go and check that out. I can't explain this here. But it basically says how close the values are. And obviously, the closer they are, the more confidence you will be. The higher the confidence, the lower the confidence interval. Okay, so the confidence interval will get smaller, meaning that you are more certain when the variation is small. So the second value is the standard deviation that measures variation. Okay, the next factor into you know how big the confidence intervals are is the sample size so if you go here and grab a sample of if this sample would be 15 users you can imagine that you know the possibilities that you get it wrong are quite high because the sample is very very small but let's say that you grab of the 24,000 you get I don't know a thousand users or 500 users so the bigger the size the higher your confidence the lower the confidence interval this is the confidence interval the smaller it gets and the smaller it gets the higher the confidence for you that you're getting the right values so here is size, sample size. And those are the factors that we need to put into our calculation in order to get it. Simple, right? So now, part two. There are two DAX functions available for you when calculating confidence interval. You have confidence norm, and then you have confidence, let me show you, you have Where is it? Confidence norm and you have confidence t. So what is the difference between them? And in simple words, if you know the average of the population and the sample size is big, then you use confidence norm. So that basically means that, let me delete that. So for example, if I would do that experiment, I know the age of the audience. YouTube gives that to me, so I know. And, you know, the sum sort of size can be the entire population because I have everything, but I could also grab a subset. And then I will use confidence norm. Confidence norm. But if it's you that is trying to do that, to, to put an ad on my YouTube, and you don't know the average of the population and your sample size is small, then you have to use confidence t, okay? The bigger this, when the samples start to get big, you can use either one, okay? But the, the important part is that, do you know the average of your population? Okay, good. Okay, now we are going to calculate, ladies and gentlemen, the in a practical case. So I went to uh, online and I downloaded a data set with age, which is basically the ladies Oscars. But let's pretend that somebody went into my YouTube channel, grabbed the age of, I don't know how many, let's, let's find out. So we go to, because we need to know. So sample, sample size. So it is basically count rows of my data set. So somebody went to my YouTube channel and grabbed 89 people, find out their ages, wrote it on a spreadsheet and put it into Power BI. Okay, so that's what we know. 
89 people. We know the age of 89 people on my YouTube channel. Great. If we go, remember, um, let me put it here. So confidence interval, it was a function of the percentage confidence interval that you want to attain. It was the standard deviation and it was the sample size or n. Okay. So those are the parameters that we need to find out. So let's do the standard deviation of, um, of our sample. So we go standard deviation is equal to S. standard deviation of a sample and then we put data age and now we have what is the standard deviation what is this spread how big variation we have in our data that's what this indicates we have the sample size and we know that we want to achieve a 95 percent confidence interval so guess what we are ready to calculate the confidence interval so we go in here confidence level the interval we will calculate in a second so first the confidence level of 95 percent and this is confidence t because you are doing this and you don't know the average of the entire population i do you don't so you don't go confidence t and then it's one minus 95 so one minus the percentage that you want to achieve, the confidence interval that you want to achieve. Then you put the standard deviation and then you put the sample size. And that will give you what confidence level you can achieve, which is 2.47. So now to get the actual interval, we're going to calculate first the average is the average of our sample how much is that so the average age for this sample that we have is 36 years old okay now to calculate the confidence interval so we have this is where we are at we know that the average is 36 years old so what is this one and what is this one? So this is how you do it. You go and create a new measure that says the lower bound or the lower interval, <laughs> what do you call that? It is uh, the mean, the average, whatever, minus we will talk about that in another video. The confidence interval, okay? And that will give us a lower bound, which is 33. This is our average, which is 36. And now we're going to calculate the upper bound. So this is the upper, which is the average plus our confidence level. The average plus our confidence level we got it here so there we have it 33 years or 38 years what does it mean now remember 95% sure you are 95% sure that the average age of my youtube channel not of the sample of my youtube channel is between 33 and 38 now that you know that you can go and do your commercial easy right it's super fun and very very useful you can do this with absolutely anything okay so i hope that this helped you i hope you understand better what confidence intervals are and um, i hope you're having a great summer so 
Thank you for today. I'll see you again on Monday. Take care and bye-bye.